going to church and I'll, I'll turn around nervous and see what she says to me. So I called her and said, we're on the way to church. And I said, I'm nervous. And she said, get over it. And I said, thank you. God bless you. I appreciate that. And uh, I thought Brother Black had a more spiritual wife than mine was. But it is good to be in the house of God. And I want us to look at just a few verses today. And I want to give a little story of this after I read the scriptures. And I'll be out of the way quickly. But I want us to look at a time of a storm. Acts chapter 27 is dealing with a storm. And I think for the last 18 months in our country, we've dealt with a storm because it's somewhat different than anything that we've ever dealt with in our life. All the different people that we've seen affected. And someone said here the other day that the division that the storm has seen to cause. And I often see that storms that come in our lives, they'll either take us away from God or they'll bring us closer to God. And I, I pray that God would help our nation and our country and, and our churches instead of drifting away from God, I pray that through this storm that we'll get closer to God and draw nigh unto God today. Folks, there's no place to quit. There's no discharge as uh, Brother David was just using the scriptures when the disciples had went away and said, will you also go away? And I appreciate the great words that he said. He said, to whom shall we go for thou hast the words of eternal life? And folks, I'll be 59 years old next month. And I've been in church all of my life. And the same grace of God that delivered the drunkard and the drug addict was the same grace who saved me who was raised in church that never knew drugs and never knew alcohol, but it took that same grace. Right, sure and there's no one else that I would know to turn to or to go except for the Lord. And I want us to look in Acts 27, and we'll see in uh, verse number 29. The Bible said, Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under cover as though they would have cast anchors out of the ship. And Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. And I want to preach just a couple of minutes today on staying in the ship. I believe that uh, there's a lot of folks that, that think that maybe they should abandon the ship and uh, times have gotten tough and uh, God seems to be nowhere around, but I just want to tell you that I want to stay in the ship today. Amen. God has been faithful uh, throughout all the storm. I left church last night and I looked up in the sky and seen the lights and uh, we knew that according to the lightning that was taking place that uh, there was a storm about to come last yeah. night. Right. Went over to the Walmart and come out and I told Brother David, I think uh, that it's passed and uh, a bit there was the lights flashing again and Brother David said, no, the storm's still out there, it's right. on its way. And I begin to think about our lives today is the storms on its way and we got our way back to the motel when we got there. Uh, we started hearing the thunders and uh, Brother David opened the window or the curtains and the rains were coming down. And I thought, my, uh, we got inside the motel just in the nick of time. Yeah. I'm going to say something today. I'm glad that when the storms of this life are raging, uh, that we have a ship uh, we have a Lord of safety and a Lord of salvation uh, that we can get into today. Amen. You should realize that you're not the first person that's ever been in a storm in right. Yeah. I thought about these men, 276, according uh, to the scriptures, had uh, gotten into a ship and uh, probably had no idea that they were uh, going to be facing a storm, but yet, as they begin to sail, the first 12 verses in the chapter tells us of the, the direction and the places uh, that they were sailing to. And uh, what amazes me is when you get in the ship, uh, we don't all to know uh, what's going to take place. Uh, but I'm glad that God uh, is directing the ship as long as we stay in the ship. Amen. 
Then we come and we begin to sing how of uh, that Paul was delivered to of uh, Julius the centurion. And the scripture said that uh, he allowed him to get in the ship so he could make his journey. And uh, Julius wasn't the captain and he wasn't the director of the ship, but he was just a centurion. And yet he allowed him to get in the ship. And when they got in the ship, the scripture said that there was a storm uh, that began to brew. And I want to say today that there are storms around us uh, that are brewing and uh, the world don't have the answers for us. The world don't know the right things to say, uh, but there's a God in heaven. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? If you read the first 12 verses in the scripture and uh, you'll see that the Bible's given direction of what's taking place and of the places they're going to. And then the Bible tells us that it was the a certain day of the seventh month and uh, so we understand that it was really a uh, past time uh, to be seven in that day. It was probably September or uh, October and uh, they shouldn't have been in uh, of the sea sailing and they were going to try to wait in one place but yet uh, they directed the ship and uh, the scripture said that they came to a place where uh, two seas had met and the, the ship began uh, to stand still. And Paul in one verse out of a half of the chapter he begins to speak and Paul uh, gives the advice and he said uh, that it's no good uh, for us to be sailing. The best thing to do uh, for us uh, uh, is to stay put and, and uh, wait uh, until the right season uh, to be saved. But you know what? Uh, they didn't listen to him. Uh, they began to listen to uh, everything else and they failed to hear uh, what the man of God said. But I want you to know what takes place in the chapter. The Bible says that uh, the, the storm began to come and uh, there was a panic that was in this ship. And, and the scripture begins to tell us in verse number uh, 23, I think it is, uh, he said, for there stood uh, by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom uh, that I serve. You know what? There was one man that was in the ship out of 276 uh, that listened than a centurion but he said that he was a child of God and he heard the voice of God and he was trusting God in the times of the storm. Exactly. You realize you're not the first person that's ever been in a storm but when you get in a storm you better make sure you got God with you. I thought about Adam when he was in his storm in the time of the fall of the man but yet God was with him and provided uh, for him. I thought about Noah. Uh, Noah's storm came in the time of the flood. The three Hebrew children's storm came in the time of the fire. I thought about David's storm. It came in the time of the fight. I thought about Elijah's storm. It came when he was in a forest. He was a hunter, a juniper tree. But you know what? God was with each and every one of these men in the time of the storm of their life. Amen. I want you to know that God's with us today. God's with us in the times of the storm. Mary and Martha uh, were experiencing something that many of us have experienced the last year or the last two years. And uh, their brother had died. And man, they, they knew that if the Lord had just been there, uh, then God could have saved all of this panic from taking place. And they had a funeral. But you know what? Uh, God was with them in the time of their funeral. All this and everybody has a storm. And we go through a storm in life. I thought about the prodigal son. Oh, he left home and, and he thought he was doing the right thing. Uh, but the Bible said, up uh, in ran out of money. When he got into the far place, he realized his life uh, was in a storm. So in the far place, he had a storm. But you know what? He said, I will rise and go to my father's house. And thank God the Lord is still with us in the time of the storm. Amen. I want us to look at just a few things today of what Paul was saying in verse 29. He said they were fearing lest they should have fallen upon the rocks. They were in shallow water. And I'll tell you, we're living in some shallow times today. I like what Brother Epps said. I, 
I don't like the way I see things going, but, but I want to say this today. My hope is in nothing less than Jesus Christ. Yeah. Paul uh, knew why that he wanted to 
sustain of leadership today. Uh, number one was simply this. I believe that Paul knew who the right presence was in the time of the storm. Yeah. If you read the scripture, the Bible said uh, that uh, uh, when they went to the centurion, uh, Julius began to listen uh, to the crowd. Uh, and you know what we're doing today? Uh, this is uh, for the world. It's listening to what the world uh, right. says to do. And the world will tell you, the only place is going to tell you, but the church uh, is it to look at the circumstance of the world. The church is to listen uh, from the command of heaven today. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Right. But the Bible tells us in verse number 23, he said, For there Paul spoke these words, and he said, For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord. He said, Whom I am and whom I serve. I want to say today uh, that God has proved himself time and time again. Why would you want to get out of the ship uh, when God has brought you safe this morning? Uh, the old song of basic grace has uh, said, Through many dangers, calls, and snares I have already come. He said, grace has brought me safe this far, and grace shall take me home. Oh, praise God today. I've come through a lot of storms uh, in my life, but God's grace is going to bring us home. Sure. i got a young lady in our church. Today makes the 30th day that she's been in the intensive care at UT Hospital. She's probably in her uh, maybe early 40s and she went in the hospital and boy, she's had it tough. I uh, thought she wasn't gonna leave and, and she spoke back and forth to us and uh, said, I just don't know if I'm gonna make this. And she'd always say uh, that I'm gonna trust God. Uh, but yet before she'd say that, you could tell that she wondered what really was going to happen. She said, I'm not sure if I'll ever get out of here. I don't know if I'll ever see my family. She wrote a farewell letter a few weeks ago and said, I want to tell everybody that I love them. If I've ever done you wrong, I want you to know I'm sorry. And she thought it was the last day that she was ever going to have. Two days ago, I looked at the phone before when I was coming here and she began to write again and she said, uh, uh, this has been the most difficult time. She said, I don't know what's going to happen. I've been 20 at that time, 28, 29 days in the hospital. Uh, she said, I'm so discouraged. I'm not able to breathe on my own. And before she got off, uh, she made this last line. She said, but I'm still going to trust God. Let me tell you what happened. She stayed in the ship. And th th that night when we got out of church, on last night, I looked at it again, and she wrote another thing, and she said the first words. She said, I just want to thank God that this is the best day that I've had yeah. since I've been in the hospital. You say, preacher, is it worth it? But stay with God and stay true to God. Let me tell you something. It's worth it. Paul, for thou must be brought before 
Caesar. And oh God had given them all that sail with pain. And then the next verse, he uses that word cheer again. He said, wherefore, sirs, let me up good cheer. Take your Bibles and turn back to chapter 23 just for a second. I want to show you one verse of that God just to let my soul be in chapter 23 and verse 11. Now, this isn't the words of Paul. It's not the words of Julius. It's not the words of those of that on the ship of the soul. When Paul had a word that came from God. And you know what God told him? He said, uh, and he said, and then the night calling, the Lord stood uh, by him. God stood by him in chapter 23. And in chapter 27, he made it clear again that the presence of God was with him. But he said these words, and this was the Lord Jesus. He said, Be of good cheer. Amen. Oh, be of good cheer, Paul. Amen. For as thou has, he has testified to me in, in Jerusalem, he said, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Yeah. You know, the Lord told him in verse 11 of chapter 23, he said, Paul, I want you to be in good cheer. He said, it's going to take place. You're going to make it to Rome, and you're going to bear witness to me there. Yeah. Well, somewhere between there and Rome in that journey, as they begin to go uh, heading towards Caesarea, and the Bible says that uh, they had this terrible storm, and uh, the south winds begin to blow. Did you know there's a difference in the types of winds that blow? And they blow different storms. Uh, some have a, a, a storm that's heat, uh, and some have a wind, a blowing storm. But I want you to know that there's different kinds of storms that can face the weather, but God's the same. Paul begins to tell us in verse 22 and verse 24. Paul said, I'm going to stay in the ship, not just because I have the presence of God, there's one that stood by me, one with whom I serve today. But he said, I'm going to stay in the ship. He said, because he's made a promise to me. Did you know what the scripture said? You remember the disciples? got in the boat, Jesus told them, he said, once you get in the boat, let us cross over to the other side. But while they were in the ocean or in the sea, the Bible said that a storm began to arise. And the disciples began to wake Jesus as he was in the hyper part of the ship asleep. Jesus woke up and he spoke to the storm. He rebuked the storm before he even spoke to the disciples. The Bible said they looked and said, what manner is this that even the winds and the waves obey? But if they could have just remembered what Jesus told them before they got in the boat, he said, we're going to cross over to the other side. Yes. Don't you realize today that when you got saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, the grace of God through faith, don't you know that heaven became your home and every single one of us are going to make it safe yes. to the other side. Well, I see something else here in a hurry. Paul not only stayed in the ship because he had a promise, but he encouraged them to stay in the ship because that there was a promise. But then Paul speaks about the provision. Look, if you will, in verse number 33. The scripture tells us in chapter 27 of verse number 33, Paul begins to talk to him about the provision of the Lord. And he said, and while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take me, saying, This day is the fourteenth day of that ye have tarried and continued fasting. He said, Having taken nothing. And then in verse 34, he said, Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. Uh, for this is for your health, and there shall not uh, be a hair to fall from your head of any of you. Aren't you glad today that you can stay in your ship? Uh, because that's where the meal is going to come from. Amen. He said, I want you to take some meat. You know, they didn't have compasses back in this time. This was even before compasses. You know how they directed their ships? They directed their ships by the sun and the moon and the stars. And the Bible said that they went all these days, probably 11 days, and there were no sign of any stars or, or moon or sun, and, and they lost all direction. Right. 
Right. Should them something God didn't lose direction of where they were. Right. Paul said, I want you to take some meat. Paul said, you've got to stay in the boat because in that little boat there's no meat. But in this ship, there's some meat that you can take. Right. But then Paul said in verse 35, he said, and when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken, he began to eat. You know what? I find what else Paul did. Paul not only realized the presence of God, he not only understood the promise of God, he not only understood that God had given provision, but Paul said, I believe it's a good time to pray. Yeah. Folks, don't you know that when you're in the ship, no matter what's going on, even especially in the time of the storm, just give thanks to God. The Bible said that he took bread and he prayed it, and he gave thanks unto the Lord. I want to stay in the ship because I know that I've got a prayer in the ship in the time of the storm. And next to the last thing that I say today is this, in verse number 35, in the verse that I've read, Paul no only had a prayer. But Paul had a praise. I just want to say today that through it all, I just want to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All oh, this, why do you bless Him? Because He satisfies us. He heals of our diseases and our sicknesses. I just want to give God the praise and the glory today. Of no matter how bad the storm is, God's going to see us through the storms of this life. Back to last year, I was telling Brother Cal last night, as he was telling me in his carry door, arrives of 600 cases of COVID in our church last year. We had 97 cases of COVID. We had six deaths from May of 2020 to May of 2021. Out of 52 weeks, I preached 72 funerals. Well, they have 72 funerals. Every time the angel would call me, I was either at a funeral coming into one or coming out of a funeral. And not everybody that I preached a funeral for uh, were saying that there were some of them uh, that were all saints of God. And one of them was not bad, as I have already mentioned. And I tell you, that's a storm uh, that I've been through in my life. And, and I don't want to ever go through that again. But I'll tell you one thing. God's been faithful to me when during that storm. He said, well, we weren't able to have church. We said, we'll have it in the parking lot. We had some of the sweetest presence of God in the parking lot. We had a little girl one Sunday morning in the parking lot that got saved. But by the grace of God, I want you to know, that when the storms of life are raging, stay in the sheep. Yeah. Right. But the last thing I say is this. Look at verse 36. The Bible said, then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. I want you to know that in the storm that they had some peace. When Jesus told Paul Amen. in chapter 23 and verse 11, he said, Paul, he said, I want you to be of good cheer. He said, it's the will of God that you make it. And you're going to preach and you're going to give the gospel. It's the will of God. Be of good cheer. And then chapter 27, all these men, after they got off of one ship and they got another ship, they uh, threw over the grain, they threw over the tackle of the ship. They didn't think they had anything left. And they were going to let down another little ship just acting like that they were let down anchors and they were going to forsake the ship. And Paul said, don't leave the ship. Yeah. Let me encourage you today, don't leave the ship. Amen. Amen. I've told our church, don't leave the ship. Amen. You know what God's done for us at Liberty Baptist Church? We've got a few that's not been back yet. But I'll tell you what God's done. We took on probably as many missionaries in this time of the storm that we've ever took on. Our offerings have been larger than they ever have been. God's still saving souls. People's joined the church. And you say, what is that? I want you to know if you just take a God in the time of the storm, stay in the ship. Amen. It's worth it all to stay in the ship. Amen. 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 Amen.